head specifically uh, will be the first time I'm stringing is uh, the Legend Senior. Um, and my, I have a general idea of how I'm going into this one. Um, as I said before, if it's a, a stick that I've done a bunch of times, like this Evo, I can basically do it with my eyes closed. Um, if it's a stick that I'm doing for the first time, or maybe I've only done a few of, you know, I have a general idea going in of um, when I'm going to start to double up, which we'll get into later of uh, the different knots and how you lock down the, the mesh into the sidewall. Not going to lie, these heads were a little intimidating for me at first because there are so many options. Carve out some time if you're doing it for the first time and you want to make sure it's a stick, you know, you're going to get the desired pocket that you want. Um, don't, don't be afraid to tear it out and do it again. The material's durable, you're never going to have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, but it's definitely worth putting in the extra effort and time to make sure that you're getting a stick that you really like. Right. Um, so getting into the string, first thing I always do is uh, pull out all the length of the sidewall that I want. Um, so for the top string, um, kind of rule of thumb for me is I always go about an arm's length um, or about halfway across my sternum. The worst thing in the world is to start stringing and get to the end and you don't have enough. Um, I hate to be wasteful, but it's worth cutting an extra like two inches off the end than having to cut a whole nother piece. Um, to get your, to make sure that you have enough um, length. So, um, top string, going to do a little bit longer on this one. Um, I always like to burn the ends as I go, just so they don't start to fray. Um, when burning the ends, I'll put a nice clean edge on this one. Try and use the hottest part of the flame, which is usually the blue and then just kind of slowly melt the outer layer of the string and carefully pull that end over so you get a nice clean does that work? Mm -hmm. nice clean edge on it um, so I'll repeat that process a couple more times same thing with the sidewalls I'm gonna go a little long especially if it's a head that has a lot of options like this one cut yourself a little extra length because um, you might put end up putting in a few extra knots that you might not always put in with a different head. One thing to be aware of if you're using colored strings, sometimes the outer layer stretches more than the inner layer of a string. Um, so always make sure to pull from a, one of the um, burnt ends all the way down just to make sure that I have a nice even string. Okay, so getting into the mesh. Um, there's multiple different ways you can string um, your top string from just you know some of the basics to some of the Iroquois drop string, drop top string, excuse me. Um, so, tons of different ways to do it. The way I prefer to do it um, is I'm going to actually use a row of 10. So, on your standard lacrosse mesh, you're going to have a row of 10 and then a row of 9. And that's 9 diamond, 9 and 10 diamonds across. Um, a lot of people like using the 9s up top um, for that top string, and then they string on the 10s down their sidewall. Um, I kind of like doing the opposite, um, and the reason being is one, it helps me get a little bit more tension at the top of the stick, um, and then in addition to that, um, I can get a lot more hold from the pocket without adding extra whip. Um, so when you add that extra whip, um, you're delaying the release of the ball. Um, I like a nice, quick, smooth release um, in my sticks. So I found this way to be the most effective way to string the sticks and then um, get the desired pocket that I like. Um, and it actually works really well for if I'm putting in a high pocket for a defensive player or a mid to low pocket um, for a midfielder or attackman. Um, so it works really nicely. Um, so on my top string, I'm going to make sure to fold it over nice and cleanly um, just so that I don't have anything pull. Um, and have a nice clean top string once I get down to the end here. So um, I like to start in the middle 
Um, and then since I have six holes at the top here, um, I kind of just divvy it out for the inner six diamonds. So my middle two diamonds will be tied down to the middle two top string holes and um, follow the pattern down. Um, so one, will, one thing I will do is at the end my final two will not be locked in with the top string. Um, and I'll show you once we get there um, how I lock in the edge of that first ten. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So, um, I like to do my top strings with the kind of classic top string knot. And I'm going to do that by first. I'm going to fold the string in half. Um, I am going to put a little extra length on the side that will be going across because I will need this a little bit extra length to go over the top of the scoop here. And then, so I'm going to feed the, oops, other fingers. I am going to put my two ends of the top string through the mesh. Just double checking it's the right hole and I drop it again. I'm have some good editing here. So feed them through the mesh, over the top, or through the back of the head, and then through the little loop that I made. Let's pull the tension through. So what I'm going to make sure to do as well is the positioning of the top string on the diamond. I'm going to make sure, since I'm working on the left side of the head here, I'm going to make sure it's kind of in the left half of the diamond. Um, symmetry and making sure the right and the left match perfectly are probably the, probably is the most important thing when stringing a lacrosse stick because um, otherwise you're going to be an inconsistent pocket or inconsistent release um, and you won't get the desired effect that you like. So now as I move on I am going to um, Pull the string back through the same diamond. I'm going to put it between the fold of my mesh here. And then I'm going to repeat the same process that I just did, um, but I'm only going to have the one string. So once I kind of get it clean here, I'm going to go out the front of the mesh, through the top string, oops, oops, through the top of the scoop. Now I'm going to come back through the mesh so that the top string is kind of folded over itself there. I pull a little tension in it. You can see how it will lock as it has here. And then I'm going to do the opposite. So now I'm going to go straight through the mesh, through the back side of the scoop. So. Before I pull the tension in it, that's what it'll look like. You can see the tightened one versus a loose one there. And then tighten up the knot. So, I've got my first two, making sure the mesh is nice and even, and then I'm just going to do the two remaining on both sides. Q time lapse.
especially with the top string. I'm going to make sure. <clears throat> I'm never afraid to go back and pull more tension. Sometimes the string will stretch a little bit as you, as you start going and you start really pulling on it. Um, and especially with the top string and then the first couple knots as you go down the sidewall, you want as much tension as you can possibly get. Um, so go and don't be afraid to go back and retighten um, everything because you will get a much better result um, once you do. So again, don't be afraid to take your time. Alright, so I'm down on one side, um, so as you can see, lock down the fifth, fourth, and third diamonds counting from the center. Um, again, these last two, I'm going to tie in um, the sidewall, and then I like to do a double wrap around the sidewall head before putting the knot in. Um, benefit to this is the knot, some of these sidewall holes can be big, and once you start playing, um, and these knots start moving around, and um, you get a little extra slack on it. Sometimes those knots can go through. So um, this is a great way to prevent those knots from popping through. Um, and then no catastrophes on the field um, mid-game. Alright, now that I'm halfway done, again, I'm going to go through and actually pull out this first knot and pull my tension back as I go across. Typically the top string takes me the longest um, just because I put a little bit extra of um, time and tension in it because um, again top string can be very very important in holding this tension um, and keeping um, stick nice and tight and having that nice smooth release off the top Especially for if you are a newer player and say you went to and you bought went to Dick Sporting Goods or even online and bought a beginner stick, um, which typically are strung well. Uh, the material is not quite up to some of the stringing and Gemalax uh, quality, um, but you will notice in the stringing that often the top strings are not very tight. Um, which results in the ball not coming out of the stick as smoothly as it should um, and kind of can force you to create some habits that you might not otherwise have. Um, so it might be worth taking a look whenever you're buying a stick. Um, if you're just buying it off the shelf, take a look at the top string. Back to the time lapse. little trick here I like to do when doing the top string is I'm from the back side pulling the next diamond over so that I'm making sure that I'm getting the right placement of the knot on the right in the diamond. So, done with the top string here. Notice it's pretty even on both sides. The knots match pretty well. And then again, did the uh, ran the side or the top string through the sidewall twice before putting the knot on. Again, you notice I do have this bit extra, but rather be safe than sorry. Cut a little, a few extra inches on both sides. So, um, for all my knots, you notice here. They're a little bit thicker. It's kind of a doubled knot. Um, this does a few things. One, makes the knot bigger, um, makes it less likely to pull through, um, but also gives it a little bit of extra security so that knot doesn't get loose. Um, the easy, easiest way I've found to do it 
is I pull my length that I'll have off the end of the knot and then I loop it around my finger twice so that I kind of create a little bit of a cyclone effect there and then I'm going to take the end of my string and feed it through and then I'll just pull the tension out of the knot and there you go pretty loose at this point but just a little pull on each end of it and that thing's not going anywhere pretty tight knot get the cyclone feed through and then pull the slack good? yeah okay. then another uh, little tip um, can make it easier especially um, when you're trying to feed the string through some of the smaller knots it helps if you kind of have um, burnt end if you will so um, very carefully I'm going to again use the blue part part of the flame and just kind of go along the edge of the string kind of see it's turning a little bit and I don't know if you'll be able to get it on camera um, but you can kind of see a little difference um, in the edge of it and what this does is it just makes the tip of the string a little bit more rigid, makes it easier to feed through um, the sidewall holes, and especially um, if you're trying to get, you know, to lock these in, to roll it around the sidewall hole. Um, if you've got a little bit small, smaller sidewall hole, this rigid um, string can pop through there a little bit easier. It won't bunch up on you when you go to put through the sidewall hole. Let me do that to this one. So you want to be careful that you don't burn too much. So you can see here, I burnt a little bit far into the string. Um, so I'll just go ahead and cut that a little bit off and then just re burn the end to make sure that we don't have anything fraying as we go. <clears throat> Alright, so um, if this was a head that I had kind of never done before, um, I would do both sidewalls side at the same time and make sure to like match everything up. Um, gives me a better idea as I get through like halfway through the sidewall and towards the bottom. Um, the pattern that I'm looking for, how it's going to look um, once I get all done. But, since it's the head that I've um, got some experience doing, um, I'm just going to do one sidewall at a time. So I'll walk you through my step-by-step -step process of how I do my sidewalls. As I mentioned before, I am stringing, I did the top string on the 10 diamond rows. I only locked in the middle 6, so that leaves 2 on the end. The inner open diamond is not going to be used, but I am going to tie down the outside one as my with the sidewall string. Um, what I find this does, um, and I'm also going to skip two holes here. So what this is going to do is it's going to put a lot of tension on this first row of diamonds. Um, and it's really going to make sure that I have a really tight top string um, so that I get that smooth release and I'm not going to have to worry about the mesh folding as the ball comes through it's going to be nice and smooth um, so again just like I did on the top string I'm going to wrap this around the sidewall a few times just kind of helps keep tension um, especially again once those the, you get later in the life of the stringing um, the stuff loosens up a little bit so pulling this through here twice can help keep this string nice and tight as it takes some wear and tear. So, um, and then as I'm again as I mentioned earlier, um, I like to do my sidewalls on the row of nine diamonds. 
Um, this is something that was kind of made famous um, by Mark Matthews, played at Denver. Um, when it came out that he was using that the nine diamond row, it kind of caught on slowly. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't start using it for a few years until after that. Um, but once I strung it up, I really liked it. Um, so I kind of stuck with it from there. So um, to lock down my first couple rows of the um, sidewall. Again, tension is key. So um, for this specific head with this string king head, I've got 29 holes. Um, so I'm going to end up skipping a lot of them. Um, so the first sidewall hole, I locked my top string in. Um, skipped one. Third hole is going to be locking in um, my first sidewall. So, and again, that's on a row of 10. Now I'm going to skip two holes here, and this is going to be a pretty big gap. Um, so it's really important that I really, really pull on this um, to get the mesh to stretch and pull over. The nice thing about String King mesh is it doesn't stretch too much, right? So once I'm done stringing it, I'm not going to have to worry about, you know, playing wall ball for an hour and it's going to be thrown differently. It's going to be pretty consistent. Um, but that also makes it a little difficult when stringing it, um, just in that I'm going to have to really, really pull on this to get to bring this mesh over because you can see this is a pretty big gap that I'm going to have to close here. Um, so for these first strengths, um, first knots that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go from the outside to the inside of the sidewall and then I'm going to go up through the mesh and then I'm going to go through the section of string that was um, coming from the first knot. So I get a little bit of a knot for length coming from the sidewall. And I'm going to really pull on this down. So as you can see, I close that gap. Now I'm just going to pull the length through. And you can see I've, whoops. I've closed that gap. So now I'm going to do the same thing um, for a few knots. And what this is really going to do is it's going to keep a lot of tension on this top part of the of the the pocket. Go to the fifth. So I'm going to skip another hole and go to the fifth sidewall hole. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to skip another hole and go till the seventh. So again, pulling from the knot above through the outside of the mesh, or I'm sorry, the outside of the sidewall, through the mesh, and then through the loop. Pull out a little extra slack. Now just to make sure everything's tight, I'm going to pull the knot before. Kind of hold it with my fingers, re-pull that tension, and close the gap. So as you can see, these diamonds are being pulled pretty tight. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So. Now on the string king head, these, these um, sidewall holes are getting pretty small, right? Giving you option. Um, so again, since I'm kind of familiar with the pattern, I'm going to skip three holes now and then create the loop. what it looks like thus far. Alright, so these first four rows are going to be locked in. And this is really, this is actually helping us form the channel already. Um, because these top sections of the sidewall are going to be so tight that once I start to double, 
um, the pocket will form very very quickly um, and I will get a nice channel in this pocket. So now that I've tied these all down you can see by me pushing on it I'm not getting a ton of wiggle right that's what we're looking for. Keeping lots of tension here is going to help um, keep a smooth release um, throughout the life of this stick. So now it's time to form the pocket. Now that I've got my uh, first couple rows locked in, I want to start to double up on um, the amount of mesh that I'm locking in with each knot. Um, this is going to help that pocket uh, form pretty quickly. So I do a little opposite here of what we were just doing. So I'm going to weave through the next two rows that I want to lock down. I'm going to take the end and then again I'm going to go through the outside of the mesh, or outside of the sidewall hole. Let me make sure my pattern, you're going to have to cut that up a little bit. So now I'm through the sidewall. Now I'm going to go through the mesh, the mesh hole of the, the second row that I'm going to lock in, and then pull my tension through. And then the only thing you got to make sure to do is that the part coming through the sidewall overlaps the um, length going into the sidewall to create your knot. So I'm just going to pull all the tension out and then as you can see this knot does look a little different than the ones we've done before and this is going to help us form that pocket. So then I'm going to repeat that step. Can you show that step one more time too when yeah. you repeat it? Just yeah. really. So starting from, so you see this knot is actually all within that Hole. It's called an interlock. Locks that thing down. So now again, going through my next two rows, I pull my slack. And one, two, three, one. Got my sidewall hole. Again, I'm through the mesh, or through the mesh through the sidewall, and then I'm going to go through the mesh again. Pull my length all the way. Get my tension. So then I'm going to do one more. So the last row that I'm going to lock in, I'm actually going to do this type of knot. So I'm no longer going to do a double, so I'm going to go back to that old pattern that we had of through the sidewall, through the diamond, and then loop. Once again, pulling my tension. This one's not going to be as tough to pull the tension like it is on the top, um, but just kind of helps lock in that bottom piece of the mesh. Alright, so now that I'm at the end, I'm going to want to lock this puppy down. And this is a point where I was talking about earlier, where I don't have a lot of space in that sidewall hole, but I do want to wrap this through. So having the burnt and kind of rigid edge helps me get that string through without a ton of effort. Pull the length through and then do my double knot. So I'm going to loop it. Bring it through. Pull out my slack. 
and lock that knot in. Again, way too much hair. Um, probably just did that for dramatic effect. Definitely I'm not going to run out here. So, now that I have one sidewall done, I'm going to repeat the exact same process on the other side so I get a nice symmetrical result. Over the edge, feel like I'm floating through the air. The pain I felt is painful, all is said and done. sidewalls done. Um, at this point I'm going to kind of stretch this mesh out a little bit to kind of see what I'm dealing with. Um, so even though with the extra length of string kind of getting in the way, I have a pretty good idea of what this pocket's going to come out to. So um, personally I like a low, mid-low pocket. Um, this does a few things. One, um, the ball is going to sit nicely at the bottom of the stick there um, but with the way that this is strung you can see I have a ton of tension at the top here All right so I get a nice especially once it gets broken in a little bit like I said the shrinking mesh isn't going to move too much um, but I have a nice sharp channel going through there um, so I'm going to get a nice smooth release um, without a ton of whip so um, for those of you who might not know, whip essentially um, is typically created with a shooting string, um, but it's going to hang on to the ball to delay the release as you go through your passing or shooting motion. For me personally, I don't like a ton. Um, I end up just spiking the ball into the ground. Um, so as you can see, is my hand is kind of going to mimic how the ball is going to release. None of that mesh is pulling. Right? It's going to roll smoothly out the top of the stick. So, um, at this point, I'll put a bottom string in here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do first is trim up some of this excess. Um, so, typically, um, so by rule, you're only allowed to have two inches um, of the string hanging off. Um, I try and keep that two inches um, just so that um, in the event you need to go through and just retighten everything. Um, you have some length um, when you're going through. And the nice thing is that you already know how much you need. Um, so just by trimming that up, burning the ends again so they don't start to fray. If I need to redo it, I'll be able to pull that knot out and then redo the top string or sidewall, whichever strings need to be tightened up. Again, pulling my little bit of length. Leave those extras off to the side, especially when you cut a bunch of extra length like that. Might be able to use it on this stick or maybe on another one. Um, I try not to hoard too much of it because you end up with a bag full of short strings. So if I don't think I'll use it, I'm not afraid to just toss it. Uh, but lengths like this, good for a bottom string, uh, might be able to use them as a shooter across. Uh, these might be a little short, but there are some uses to this extra string that you have. Um, so, 
I'm going to use this one right away for this bottom string. Um, I'm just going to burn this just so I don't end up fraying. I will end up cutting a little bit extra off here, but um, again, never want to be short. Um, so for a lot of my bottom strings, um, pretty standard for a lacrosse head. You're going to have four holes at the bottom. Um, I typically go through, I use the middle two. Um, and kind of depends from stick to stick on which row of diamonds um, I weave this through. Um, pretty typically, I use the last row that I locked in on the sidewall. So um, that was a row of nines. So I am going to go one diamond in. Um, so I typically kind of count them out. So if I'm in the first, or the first is locked down, I'm going to weave through the second. The third, I'm going to, uh, and the fourth, I'm going to skip a diamond because otherwise you're not going to come out evenly. So I'm second, third, fourth, I'm going to skip the fifth, back in through six, seven, and then eight. Again, the ninth is locked down on the sidewall. And I'm going to pull this whoops, through the other bottom hole. Um, since I do have a lot of length here, I'm going to pull this even and then just for the sake, I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. But for this knot, I'm going to pull my length and I'm going to kind of just do a standard knot that I was doing before. So I've created my loop and feed these through and then just like everything else, pull my tension. Alright, now as you can see, it doesn't necessarily need to be super tight um, with the way that I string. Um, you definitely do need a bottom string on there just so the ball doesn't pop out and this mesh isn't wiggling around. But it's not super tight. Um, everything's kind of taken care of by the sidewall. So, to repeat the process again, I'm going to cut my ends, making sure I give... And the biggest thing is making sure that you give yourself enough, enough length to re-tie the knot. Doesn't... Um, you know, having a short or long string here does make a difference. Um, if you go to re-tighten um, your top string or sidewall, um, this little bit of length at the end allows you to tie the knot, um, which, again, you never want to be short. So, um, probably about 90% 90, 90 of the stick's done at this point. Um, most of the hard work. Now, um, Preference wise, I like to have one shooter in here to give my, me a little bit of whip. Um, as you can see in some of these other my other sticks, this one's had a little wear and tear to it. But you can still see that the mesh does not fold over. Um, and what this shooter here all is going to do is just grip that ball a little bit as it's releasing out of the stick. So, um, this nice tipped lace from String King. Um, if you don't, they also make, you can get them off of a spool. I prefer the cotton shooters. They grip the ball a little bit better, um, so you get a little bit more consistent um, release from it. Um, tip laces are nice. Not, not completely necessary, though, um, if you don't have them. So, um, I kind of like to figure out through, you know, trial and error, you kind of figure out where the um, release point of the stick is going to be. So, as I move my hand through this mesh, kind of mimicking the ball, you can kind of see where the mesh starts to kind of bounce, right? So as I'm putting some pressure, you can kind of see the mesh starts to push my hand down. Um, what that tells me is that's going to be kind of a kick point for the ball. Um, so typically that's where I like to put the shooter at probably right right at the end of that mesh flexion. So that looks like it's going to be about on this fourth or fifth row here. You used to be able to have a U shooter in here. Mm -hmm. 
and that would really like just hold on to the ball. Oh. Like, um, so that rule was put in in 2012 in college lacrosse. Um, so it was my junior season. Um, we basically what it came down to was the way that sticks were being strung was that it was a disadvantage or was an advantage to the offensive players because um, it was much more difficult to get the ball out of the stick like when a, when a defender checked it. Um, so the committee's theory was taking the U out would um, mitigate that, but then people, through the advancement of mesh weaving um, and the material, they've been able to put more grip into the mesh, um, so it hangs onto the ball a little more. And then with some of these types of um, patterns, such as this nine diamond, it can create some of the same effects that the U created. So, once I get to the end, looks pretty good coming through with the, the shooter. Um, so I kind of, I like my shooters a little bit looser. Um, so just so everyone, just to cover it, um, the, with these um, cloth shooters, the looser I put them, the more it'll kind of hang on to the ball as it become, as it releases. And if you do them a little tighter, it'll not hang on to the ball as much. Um, personally, I do this one a little loose just because I have so much tension coming through the top. And then when I tie this off, I'm actually not going to tie it at the sidewall head to, or the sidewall um, of the head, which would kind of lock it in. Um, I leave mine a little loose, um, so it does kind of have some give to it and some play. Um, I, I will come and adjust it after playing wall ball or you know doing some shooting and stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave a little slack in there right now, so that um, essentially the shooter is going to self tension. Um, so as I play wall ball and start shooting with this thing, um, the shooting string will kind of even out to where it's going to be um, based on my throwing mechanic um, and how the ball gets released from the sticks. So again, got to cut the ends and then very carefully burn these edges because otherwise they will fray. So just kind of melt the ends and pinch it together. That's all she wrote. Good to go. Alright, threw this on a handle, went and played some, uh, some wall ball off our rebounder in the back there. Um, I love it. Throws really smoothly. Um, not a lot of whip, doesn't hit off the top. Um, overall, really like it. Um, kind of bummed I have to give it away to somebody. Um, but, a few things with it, right? First, first off, it's legal. Kind of something some people don't think about. Um, that roll is a little slow right now, but I promise you, if they're playing a little bit more wall ball than I just did for two minutes, um, that channel will loosen up a little bit and even and it'll roll right out. Um, so, giveaway time. We are going to be giving this head away, so make sure you like this post and follow the contest rules below, and we'll be announcing a winner shortly. Schmidus Strings, signing out. See you guys next time.